Okay, yeah. So, welcome, whoever's watching. Uh, I am here today with Reboot. There's uh, quite a bit to talk about in this game, so we're just going to get right into it, starting right now. Reboot, based on the first fully 3D animated TV show, uh, started in the, the early 90s, I think like 93, I'll have to look that up. Uh, not much like the show, though. It has the same characters, it's in the same world. Not much like the show other than that. There are two main objectives in every level. Uh, one of them, you can see in the bottom left corner there's a little, like, key card icon. We need to collect keys in every level. Uh, that's what I'm going to right now. Ooh, get up there. There we go. Key acquired. key acquired, perfect. There's some number of keys in every level. You'll be able to tell how many based on, uh... Based on those icons. The second objective, you know them, you love them. That's right, we got tears here. We love tears. We gotta mend the tears, though. Tears, they're just these little, like, rips in reality. We need to mend them before they blow up the world. That's that's what we're doing with tears. Um, now, as I stand here and take a bunch of damage, you may be wondering why that happens. Well, you see... Tears take a set amount of time to spawn in every level. Uh, and the timer, the spawn timer for each tear, starts uh, for the first tear when the level starts, for the second tear once you've mended the first tear, and for the third tear once you've mended the second tear. However, if you take a death between mending the first tear and mending the second tear, the timer for the third tear starts early, so you may have noticed that I mended the second tear, and then just a few seconds later, this third tear spawned, right? Normally, it's like 45 seconds between the second and third tear spawning. It's a lot of time, but I wish I understood why when we, when we take a death like we did, starts that timer early, gives us a, uh, a big boost in that. We're going to be using that glitch a lot throughout this run. This game has 19 levels. I think we do the early tear glitch on like seven of them. And that's... And then there's some boss levels where we can't do the glitch. So it's it's more than half of the levels we, uh, we use this glitch. Uh, the next thing that I want to point out is the weapons. I picked up an upgrade to my pistol in the first level. One of those blink and you miss it kind of things. Uh, I didn't call it out because the pistol is worthless. Right now I'm picking up the blaster, which is the weapon we're going to be using for almost the whole rest of the game. Uh, before the first tear spawns in this level, because we do have a little time before then, I'm going to go ahead and try to pick up another extra life. Those are the big floating yellow and black discs. Nice. With uh, needing to do the early tear glitch as much as we do, and considering the fact that this game is just generally pretty hard, we are going to pick up a bunch of extra lives. And luckily, like I said, the tears are on like a set timer before spawning, so... Uh... Sorry, I need to pay attention to the timer for just a moment here. All to do with the early tear glitch. I think... Yeah, I think basically any time I can die now. Anyway, yeah, the, um... We need a bunch of extra lives, because we're going to be dying a lot. Because in addition to the early tear glitch taking a life every time we need it, uh, this game is also just pretty hard. That's the other thing we're gonna get into. Uh, this is a game that I started speedrunning because I... Ah, I don't need that life, that's fine. I remembered having it as a kid, but... I was never able to beat it without cheating. There are cheat codes. There's cheat codes that let you fly, cheat codes that give you infinite ammo. Uh, I This is one of the only games as a kid that I distinctly remember using a bunch of cheat codes just so I could finish the game. And after talking to a handful of other people that had this game, I have gathered I am not the only one who is in that position. There have also been a number of uh, reviews I've watched of this game online over the years, and it is so common 
uh, when they're talking about it to not mention cheat codes, but every piece of footage of the later levels, they clearly have all of the cheats enabled. I, I think it's rare for people to beat this game normally. That is the second level down already. And again, that early tear glitch is saving us so much time. Also, I'm comparing to some of best, and I really don't need to be. Oh, I'm ahead. That's nice. I haven't really run this game for months, so... <laughs> Thrilled to be ahead of PB in the early game. Uh, but yeah, the, the early tear glitch, saving loads of time. Most of the time save is in the first few levels, because these levels normally have the most waiting you would be doing otherwise. Even as they are now, there's a bunch of waiting. Like this level, it has three keys that's more than any level before it, and I get all of them before the first tear spawns. <laughs> they, they really wanted to give you enough time here, assuming you, you know, know where everything is. Because if you don't know where everything is, this game can be pretty hard to, uh, to work through. The maps have fairly complicated layouts. A lot of verticality to them, which is, you know, not super common in, in other platformers. At least in my my experience. So we're going to stand here for just a second. The tear should be spawning any moment now. Any moment now. There it is. And luckily, the early tear glitch is really easy to do on this level. Because we blow this up and we wait for ten seconds. Three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We shoot this barrel, and it just consumes all of our health right away. Uh, which is really nice. Like, you may remember on the first level, um, I, I needed to just stand in front of some turrets for a little bit and wait for them to shoot at me. It's really nice to have things that instantly take up all of your health. Oh, come on now. Come on, squid face. There we go. That's squid face. Squid face won't be bothering mainframe again. You may have heard that voice line. When Bob first sees squid face, he says, Holy killer, calamari! And then when you defeat squid face, he says, Squid face won't be bothering mainframe again. And those are my two favorite voice lines in the game. The cutscenes in this game do also have some good lines, but unfortunately we skip all of them. Okay, now we need to mend this tear very quickly. One thing that I did not mention about the early tear glitch that is really important to know if you want to run this game... Okay, good. <laughs> it's a little worried that I, I cut it too close. Uh, with the early tear glitch, you lose a life, and it starts the spawn timer for the third tear early. If the third tear tries to spawn while the second tear is still active, maybe you died too soon, maybe you're just taking too long mending the second tear, if that happens, the third tear does not spawn. It, it goes back to its normal spawn time, which is very unfortunate. You used a life for nothing and just waste a ton of time. We are going in to level 4, Site E. I think this is where I would say the game really starts picking up in difficulty. This, uh, this is about the point where I start seeing, you know, first-time players really just give up on the game. The level after this isn't too bad, and it's a fun enough level that people usually stick through it. And then after that is the first boss of the game, which is another very common point to see people just give up. We're gonna try to do the early tear glitch again here. Uh, this is a hard level to do it with, though. Also, there's these little bombs that I'm just kind of running into. They do so little damage that I just don't worry about them. I basically just ignore them. I pretend they're not there and it's never a problem. So there was a guy we were standing next to, who could have shot us a bunch, and there's that guy who also could have shot us a bunch. But we like consistent ways to use all of our health, such as that. That is much faster. Uh, at least it's more consistent. 
Speed is not necessarily... It's not like we're trying to, you know, die as quickly as we can. As long as we know when it's going to happen, that's the important thing. We can route around that. And those enemies that wander around the level... Oh, that's really unfortunate. I am going to need to get that key in a minute, because I need to mend this right now. I need to mend this right now, because pretty much immediately after I do, the uh, next hair's going to spawn. What did I have for dinner tonight? Joe made turkey burgers. And I gotta say, Joe's turkey burgers are pretty tasty. There we go. That's better. And since I ended up here, I might as well just jump right over the center. I normally take a different route around here, but I normally don't, uh... Don't miss that key the way I did. I also don't always get that life, uh, but marathon safety, I might as well. And then to end this level, we just take this elevator right back up. Sometimes you need to wait for it, it depends on, you know, how well you played the level, what kind of cycle you're on. There's actually one of the cars in this level, if you do it, if you do the level a very certain way, you can time it so that you can jump on a car to uh, skip needing to take that elevator, but that is extremely rare. I have not yet figured out why that happens. The, the paths do not seem consistent. Also, you can see how much time just falling after trying to get that key cost me there. That level mostly went pretty well, but uh, yeah, I lost a bunch of time on it. And that happens. Time losses in this game can be really big. Anyway, we're into level 5 now, which is very possibly my favorite level in this game. Level 5 is a ton of fun. All of the, uh, the guardrails on the side of the road you can use as ramps to jump. And I think this is the level where I really started figuring out and getting the hang of the, the movement in this. Because, I gotta say, the movement in this game is excellent. I love it. This is one of my favorite games. Uh, and I, I say that genuinely. <laughs> it's not a so bad it's good thing. I really love this game. But the movement is not intuitive, by any means. It's not really like any other game I've played. And most people, including me, have a very hard time figuring it out. Once I learned that strafing is the most important thing you can do, and you should be doing it pretty much all the time, the game got a lot easier. Ooh, can I make this cycle? Can I make this cycle? Did I fall? Oh, I can make this cycle, let's go. <laughs> if you don't catch that platform cycle, you do come back here eventually, uh, so it's worth just falling and getting that key later. But if you do catch that cycle, it is worth getting the key right then. So I'm very happy about that. That doesn't always happen. Yo, Manly. We're gonna do a couple of jumps here that look really scary, but are actually really easy. This one, to get our first blaster upgrade. The blaster's now stronger. Oh, can I do this right now? Oh, I can! And that jump on the car is beautiful, and I love doing it. And because we ended up on such a good pace coming back here, we can get that key before the tear spawns instead of after mending it, which, it's a small time save, but it's just, I can make this jump, right? I cannot make this jump. That's a jump I've looked at before, I'm pretty sure. That's fine, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, Bob says, glitch, grapple, and pulls us right back up. We lose a little bit of, of ammo, but it really doesn't matter. Sorry, I'm so unused to actually... <laughs> getting up there before the tear has spawned. I forgot what the faster jump was. Just one of the things about de-resting this game, I guess. There's so many little optimizations that I've found over the years. I am one of two people who has run this game, and I've been running it for uh, a while. Okay, good. And there's just so many little things that I've found, and so many more that I have forgotten over time. <laughs> There we go, level 5. Love level 5. 
Level 6 is also a, a pretty fun one in terms of just like moving around the path, but this is going to be our first boss. This is the really big tank that you see in the, uh, the loading screen here. Bosses work a little bit differently than most levels. Most levels, you know, there's the three tears, you collect some keys, you go to a vid window. Uh, with bosses, you fight the boss. Some bosses will also have a tear. You see, uh, you see this one as a tear that it's pulling along right now. We cannot mend that tear. If we try to get close to the boss, it just zaps us and pushes us back. Even if we could get close to the boss, you, you just can't mend that tear. It is unmendable at the moment. As soon as we destroy the boss, we can mend it. Alternately, uh, the first way that I beat this level, when the boss gets very close to the end of its track here, it lets go of the tear. Uh, and you have, I think it's like 10 seconds to try to mend it. Which, if you're not good enough at this game to beat this boss, 10 seconds is not enough time to mend a tear. Uh, if it's not obvious just from watching, the controls in this game are pretty dang floaty, I would say. I'm surprised that didn't finish off the boss. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just still thinking about, uh, things that I'm de-resting here. I, I can normally beat that boss. I mean, you can see, I, I lost seven seconds to my gold there. You can beat that boss a lot sooner than I just did. It's not a big deal. Anyway, that's the boss, though. Once you mend the tear, it just ends. It moves you on to the next level. Now, level four earlier, I said that's usually the first point that people stop playing this, and level six is another one. If people struggle with that boss, I've seen a lot of people quit there. Level 7 is the next one. If people get past level 7, I think they usually end up finishing the game. But this guy in particular, this golem that, that carries a terror around, really funky. You can see, I mean, even I struggled with it for a few seconds there. It's, uh, I think it moves randomly. Maybe it's influenced by what you're doing. But sometimes, I mean, I've had experiences where, even recently, even once I've been good at the game, I've had experiences where that golem just walks up to me and then pummels me with the tear until I die. And that's not good, and I don't really know how to prevent that. Also, you can see there's four keys in this level. Three of them are in this room. I'm gonna try to do a jump to this one. Oh, that was beautiful. Beautiful jump. I'm thrilled with that. That jump I just did is actually really hard. A lot of it was kind of off camera, but there's a ceiling that I was trying not to bump on. And I, I did it. I did it correctly. I did not do that correctly, though. That's fine. I'll take a different way up here. That's an invincibility power-up I just grabbed. I grabbed it because it was in the way, not because I wanted it. It's really not, uh, not useful anywhere in the game. That jump to that key is very easy. This level has several paths that it kind of expects you to take that lead to uh, the two keys that I jumped to in that room. Uh, and then you're supposed to, like, drop down into the room. But, you know, with good platforming, you don't need to worry about that at all. You can just get them. Right there, I'm picking up my second missile upgrade. I don't think I talked about the missiles when I picked them up earlier. They are the most important weapon in the game. You really need them to finish the game to be able to beat the final boss. I've tried doing a run of this game where I didn't pick up any missile upgrades, and I was able to get to the final boss and could not beat it. I just didn't seem to be doing any damage. Uh, the other tricky thing with the missiles is all of the other weapons actually have more upgrades than you need. Everything maxes out at level 3. And the pistol has, I think there's, gosh, I've never counted them. It's got to be at least 5 or 6 pistol upgrades around. Uh, and that's, we're already at the level 3 blaster and there's still at least two more of those around in the game. But there's only three missile drops. So if you don't get all three of them, then the last boss is really difficult. 
You'll see me shooting through a lot of these rooms, like shooting with my gun. That is not because I'm worried about the enemies hurting me. I'm really not. It's really easy to just, like, go through these rooms for the most part. There's a few exceptions. There are a few enemies I need to worry about. But for the most part, it's just because the less enemies on screen, the less the game lags. And this game lags a lot. <laughs> Worrying about about the game slowing down is a relatively important part of optimizing this game. Like, you can see this room is just extremely slow. Basically anywhere water is on camera. I meant to pick up an ammo drop there. <laughs> Basically anywhere water's on camera, uh, the game is going to slow down a bunch. We're also going to do a neat little out-of-bounds jump here. This doesn't save a lot of time, but it's really cool. You just jump over a wall. If you strafe against ramps like that, you can get a ton of height off of them. Whenever I talk about the movement in this game, you may hear me talking a lot about using the strafing buttons, and seriously, like... It's... it's... the most important piece of movement in this game is just strafing. I'm doing it almost constantly as I move around. There we go. These enemies don't really slow down the game, and I'm also not worried about them hitting me, but I have nothing else to do while I wait for the tear to spawn here, so I'm just gonna just gonna shoot at them. If it's called reboot, why isn't it either a boot or a reset button? Well, it's in a computer, so there might be a reset button on that computer, and you don't know what kind of case the computer has. It might be in a boot. We don't know much about the human world in Reboot. I'm just saying. This, uh, by the way, I think is the longest level in the game. It's just a lot of going back and forth and back and forth. Luckily, we're already most of the way through it. There's one more... Oh, my... I missed! I was gonna say there's one more turret there, but... Oh, well. This room's kind of funny... They, I think, expect you to mend the tear and then go into this room where there's a key. And you see there's a big hole in the middle of the floor here. There's there's this whole path uh, down that hole that takes you back to the rest of the level. And it's really long and honestly kind of difficult to go through. But with some decent platforming skills, you can just kind of jump out the way you came. It's easy enough that I wouldn't call these jumps unintended. You know, I I think the devs did know you could do this, but they feel a lot like shortcuts, you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing that honestly makes me love this game so much. Oh, that was not a good jump. That's fine. Like I said, that jump does not save much time. It just prevents you from needing to go all the way around that corner. Okay, that's fine. Almost to the end of this level now. Oops. Let's go up the ramp this time. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, that's so much better than what I did yesterday. Like I said, yesterday was my first run of this in months. It's been a while since I've played this, and I lost, like, 30, 40 seconds on that level just from bad movement. That was so much better. Goodness. This is a cool level. This is like a, a big pyramid level. You might have seen it in the, uh, the loading screen before. And it's a scary level, because... You know, every level, the tears, like I said, they take a certain amount of time to spawn, but in this level, oh, they're spawning pretty much immediately. You mend a tear, another one's already going. That's terrifying. You don't have any time to explore. You gotta hurry. And we're already at the second tear. It's right here. You, this level is built like a pyramid where you need to go up the layers, but it's really easy to skip up every single layer. <laughs> Almost every layer. It's really easy to skip up the layers for the tears. Like that. See, I got to this one before it was even interactable. Unfortunately, 
I do not have a way to skip up to the last layer of the pyramid. I, I've looked for a long time. It is one of my most sought after skips still in this game. I'll figure it out someday. And then the end of this level, uh, there's these four paths. Oh, no we. That's fine. There's these four paths that each have a key on at the end of them. You need to go across all of them. And they're not easy. It took me a long time to, to be able to consistently get across these. And it got easier when I, uh, you know, when I, when I found the various skips up the pyramid. Because when you fall, you need to climb all the way back up the pyramid. When I was first running this game, and it took me, you know, a minute to get up the pyramid a single time, falling was really, really bad. Now it just takes a few seconds, and it's not that big a deal if you fall. But it's even less big of a deal if you just don't fall, and do it first every time. And we're going to be going into the second boss of the game now. It's the big dragon head that you can see in the loading screen there. This is the web creature. I love reboots uh, lore. It's so good. This boss is really weird. Most bosses... Every boss except this one. The strategy is hit it with rockets until it dies. This one, if you try to hit it with rockets right now, it lifts up its arms and, like, defends itself. Uh, and then, once it's taken enough damage, you can start just mashing rockets at it. The weird thing about that is that nothing in the game tells you that it's going to do that, and it doesn't really telegraph very well that it's doing that. So it took me a long time to figure out why sometimes I would come into this level and just not be able to do any damage to it. But I, I figured out over time, hit it with blaster shots, and then eventually start hitting it with rockets. Yo Zingo, thank you for the good luck. Ah, my mouth is dry. I should have grabbed some water before I started. We're going into level 11, Kits. This is one of my favorite levels in this game. Uh, this is also a level where we're gonna pick up... Never mind, I already picked up a secondary weapon. We don't need to pick it up. I'm gonna use this secondary weapon, the little... I don't know, virus icon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm gonna use that in a couple of levels. But we would pick it up here if I didn't already pick it up earlier. This level, there's three paths. Each path has a key and a tear. Key. And we can do skips right there and... Oh, we got the jump! Let's go. That jump I just did is really tough. That, like, under a ceiling jump. I, I swear, it is actually really hard. I almost always fail it. But it saves a nice chunk of time. It means we don't need to take this whole path to get to this tear. We can just be right here when it spawns. Okay, and we are going to do the early tear glitch again, so I need to look at the timer. I mended that at 27.53, so I want to be respawning at about 28.04.05. I think I can die any time now, if you want to just, just shoot at me for a second. That's fine. It doesn't need to be super precise, I just can't do it too early. And then we get to sp respawn right in the middle of the level, where everything's shooting at us. And before gaining control of movement again, you know, already be at half health, that's fine. That happens in this level. It's uh, it's not a, it's not a big thing. <laughs> the platforming sections to get to the keys also not exactly easy, which is why I'm so grateful to have the uh, the skip that I did for the first couple of keys that I got. Key Even on red health, I feel confident that we're okay. <laughs> I know it's flashing red. And I think there's probably a noise going on. I can't hear it, my TV's quiet. There's probably a noise going on that's really annoying, but I think we're okay. We just need to not die while we go to the third tear, and I think we'll be fine. Third tear should spawn like any second now, by the way. There it is, yeah. And then we just go along the bottom of this path again. This is another level where I suspect we could save a chunk of time, I'm just not sure how. If we could get into this path without needing to, uh, you know, go this whole way, if we could just skip to the end of this path from the ground outside, 
That would save, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds? Time saves for another day. That was a pretty good attempt at kits. This is a good run. I mean, considering I lost, what was it, 40 seconds on level 4? This is, this is a pretty good run. We're now going to face the kit's boss. That's the giant binome that you can see attacking the, the apartment building there. Or you can see right there as it flies away from us. This is another classic example of hit it with rockets until it's done. <laughs> I, there's a bunch of cool stuff I could say about this boss, but we're gonna be here for such a short amount of time, I don't know how much of it I could say. Because, <laughs> here's the thing, this boss has two phases, and, uh, phase one, there we go, phase one is already done. It's not supposed to be, you're supposed to get to a whole other area before blowing up the first half of it. And then if the boss goes really well, like I guess it just did, that's phase two. It's supposed to be getting to these two little arena areas, and I can beat it before it gets to the first one. That was really good, wow. I'm surprised that was really good. I, I finished phase one really late, but then phase two went super fast. That surprises me. I need to look into that in the future. We're now going into Floating Point Park, which is very possibly the hardest level in this game. Yo, Pepsi. I, I don't know that I'd say that, because I never lost interest in this run. No, I, I just wanted to do a, a commentated run of it to be able to submit to marathons. It's more that I've been in the mood to start submitting to marathons again, and I'm preparing for that. Fuck well, yeah. So yeah, Floating Point Park, there's a bunch of floating islands. If you fall at any point, it ruins the cycles that I prepare for and loses a ton of time. Like, it's really easy for one fall to lose 40 seconds in this level. Also, I mentioned that I'm going to use a secondary weapon here for a change. This is the antivirus, where when you hit a turret with the antivirus, it turns blue and stops attacking you. And there's a very special reason I use it here. When you fall in this game, you actually saw it earlier, back in level 5. When you fall, it doesn't just take a life. It takes a bunch of your ammo. And then... When you respawn, it has taken a third of your ammo, but if you didn't have a third of your ammo left, then it takes a life and spawns you back at the start of the level. This is a, a good cycle. I'm doing good here. So, because of that, uh, because, you know, falling takes up ammo instead of health or something, like a normal game would do, I don't want to be using ammo, because I want to be really careful and not die if I don't have to. So, if I want to deal with these enemies that are standing right next to the tears, but I don't want to use any ammo... Ooh, okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Never mind, sorry. I panicked. I panicked, but I'm okay. <laughs> I panicked too much. What was I saying? Oh, I want to I wanna deal with the enemies, but not use any ammo. I have this antivirus. I can just make the turrets stop attacking me. That's perfect. That's exactly what I need. So I pick up the antivirus specifically for this level and no other. There are a whole bunch of other secondary weapons in this game, and unfortunately none of them are useful. I have really wanted to make use out of some of them, and I cannot find a good way to. Yeah, that was a really good floating point park. That was uh, about as good as I can hope to play it. And then we're going to a floating point park boss. I don't know why uh, the first bunch of the game didn't have any bosses and then we suddenly get a bunch in a row. I don't know what what exactly the plan was with that. This is my theory. I don't mind. I think the pacing of the game is good enough. I'm happy with it. I love this game. <laughs> if it's not obvious. If it's not obvious from the way that I've been speedrunning it for, what, four years with only one other person joining me ever? <laughs> Really? That didn't... Oh, that's not good. Why did that not finish it off? There we go. I don't understand this boss, I'm gonna be honest. 
Those three full clips of rockets, and that wasn't enough to finish it. I need to research this boss more. Sometimes you can finish it in two clips. I don't know why. <laughs> Shoutouts to Muzz, the other, the other reboot runner. Shoutouts to Muzz, who helped me reroute this level a little bit. It's not any faster now, but it's easier. Muzz pointed out a jump that I, I don't know how I missed. Uh, right up here, you can jump on that ramp, and there's a key right here. I don't need to do a bunch of other jumps to get that. It's just right there. We love Muzz here. We are now in level 15 G Prime. If you know the story of Reboot at all, I haven't really been talking about it because it doesn't matter. Uh, if you know the story though, the bad guy in this game is... oops, come on. The bad guy is Megabyte. Uh, and for most of the game, Megabyte has been like tormenting us, sending tears into the world. Uh, his sister, Hexadecimal, he betrayed at the start of the game. But Hex is back. She lived through that betrayal. And now she is mad at Megabyte, and she is getting revenge by attacking his home sector of G-Prime. That's why in this section all of the tears are red instead of blue. These are directly from Hexadecimal herself. This is also another level where we're going to use the early tear glitch. However, I don't need to time it particularly precisely because we there's a bit of space between the second and third tear anyway. Oh, I would have liked to grab that extra life. Can I do it from here? It's tricky. It doesn't matter. I'll just fall. Anyway, I don't need to time it super precisely. So in this case, I just try to go for that life fall in a pit. <laughs> I will still get to the third tear uh, well after it spawns. I also have another chance at life here. Oh, why do I keep getting stopped like that on the... Uh... Oh well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I still have enough lives to finish the game. I do, right? I do. Because <laughs> the next level doesn't use the glitch, and I pick up an extra life in the next level. And the level after that will use the glitch, but that's the last one, so I've, I've got plenty of lives, I don't need it. Ooh, that's rough. This level... When I was starting out, this level I considered to be the hardest. That jump I just did to get out is not easy. It took me a long time to get that down. Jumping across the scaffolding area is not easy. It took me a long time to figure that out, and I'm still not great at it. Those boxes just move seemingly randomly. Are you serious? These boxes are awful right now. Uh, the other thing that made this level hard is mending this tear in particular. I don't know... It's probably not obvious just from watching, but the tears have this weird, like, magnetic field around themselves. That was a beautiful jump to the end. The tears have this weird magnetic field that, like, tosses you around. And that last tear that I mended on that little narrow walkway, that is so hard to mend. It must have been, I don't know, 20 finished runs before I felt confident in doing that one. This is another level where we get to shout out Muzz. Again, just a little optimization where Muzz pointed out, and I was like, oh yeah, I never noticed that. But I'll, uh, I'll call out to it when I do it. This level uh, also has tears that pretty much immediately spawn, but they spawn with such long times, you can see... You know, I had three minutes to get to this one. I guess I never explained, if you don't mend a tear in time, and that timer at the top runs out, uh, you, it explodes and tears apart the world. <laughs> so you don't want that. Also, I just picked up the third and final rocket upgrade. It's just sitting right there for you. And at this point, rockets are the only weapon we're going to use for the rest of the game. They are still super inaccurate, and they still chew through your ammo but they do so much damage 
And there's so many of them every time you shoot them that they're worth using. Anyway, this was the other the other optimization Muzz found. You can just jump right down to that ledge. You don't need to do any intermediate platforming there. Just jump down and land on it. It's great. Love that one. The other reason we're going to use rockets for the rest of the game is the rest of the game is very short. There's not much left. There's the other extra life I pick up. And then we get to do the very special vid window cutscene skip. We mend the last tear so close to the vid window that we don't need to sit through the, uh, the little cutscene that plays to show where it is. Okay, one more regular level, and then two more bosses. And the regular level, we are using the early tear glitch again, assuming I don't mess it up, like I did in my run yesterday. This is a tough level to do it in, and it doesn't save a lot of time. But, I mean, it's still worth it, it just only saves like 10 seconds or so, 10 or 15. So I mend that tear, and then very quickly try to get both of these keys. Both that one and this one over here. Oh, okay, and then we die, and this should have been plenty of time to, uh, you know, between tears to, to take the death. Then, we wait just a moment, pick up this invincibility. We wait because we want the next tear to spawn while we still have the invincibility, and we want to mend it and get to the third tear before the invincibility runs out. The reason for that is all of this red stuff on the ground, it looks like the rest of the water in the game, but it is effectively lava. It hurts you a lot when you touch it. I'm gonna do a little bounce on it right at the end, and when I do, you'll see how quickly it, it damages me. Because I want to use it... Just bounce off it right here, and I nearly died from that. <laughs> so yeah, it's really nice to be able to just use invincibility to get across that. The sort of intended platforming for that level is really difficult. It's something that I honestly... <laughs> it was only after like two years of running the game I started feeling more comfortable doing the normal platforming in that level. But that's the last regular level. Now we're just on to the final bosses. This is Megabyte, who I mentioned earlier. He was the antagonist for most of the game. We need basically just two clips of rockets to, to take him out. He's not that bad. If we miss a bunch like we kind of are right now, we might need a third, but I think we're good. Yeah. And then the next level is the final boss. Time is going to be when the, uh, the screen goes black after defeating her. And this will be Hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is a slightly more complicated boss. You know, most, most bosses in the game, I described the strategy as hit it with rockets until it dies. This one is different in that I need to hit these mirrors with rockets. Uh, and then I need to hit her with rockets until she dies. It is... The platforming in this game is really hard. The bosses are not... Except for the level 10 boss, the webbed creature. That one is. There we go. That is the end of the game right there. And... Time. 4310. Very good run. I mean, PB is, you know, 41. And I'd like to get a 40. But again, I lost like 40 seconds on one level here, so this, this was fine. Where, where else did I... I'm, I'm sorry, I... I did not, not mean to hit reset. That was an accident. I meant to go to best segs to see where I lost time. That's fine, though. Again, perfectly fine run. But yeah, that, that is Reboot. Uh, we can see this little cutscene at the end of the game where Fong comes up and tells us, Hey, you didn't beef it. You saved everyone. Congratulations. If you take too long on any level in the game, if you spend, you know, 10 minutes trying to beat a single level. Uh, in this cutscene, Fong comes up and basically says, like, yeah, you beat Hexadecimal, but the world is all messed up and it's all your fault. And I don't think the game tells you anywhere that it's because you took too long. That's something that I learned a long time after I started speedrunning this. I, I learned why that happens occasionally. 
So in a sense, the game has, you know, speedrunning built in mind. It expects you to try to beat it at a certain speed anyway. Yeah, that is Reboot. That is my favorite platformer for the PS1. Uh, is that true? It's up there. It's one of my favorites. It's my favorite action platformer for the PS1. Maybe I'll say that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for considering this for whatever marathon you're hosting. <laughs>